the night of the Cuban blockade, do you remember that there was... Mm. Cuban like, Missile Crisis? Yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. NBC was the pool. They would pull big stories that one company had a month at a time. <clears throat> but USIA wanted it on film. So I was asked to take a crew and go in through the executive office building and then tunnel and up into the White House. Because there were 400 reporters that gathered that day. They didn't know what was happening. Mm -hmm. They knew that Jack's back was bothering him. They thought maybe that was something that was going to come out of that from his injury in the PT boat. And we set up, the president came in and he looked at the monitor, he had about 20 minutes, and he looked at the monitor and he says, I need a shave, I'll be back. And NBC says, wait a minute, that's a dirty monitor, we'll give you a different monitor. Over. So he was happy. A phone rang and he reached under the coffee table and got a red phone. Hi, Dad. Oh, nothing much. You might want to watch television at 7 o'clock, I think I'm going to be on tonight. <laughs> Man, they got the, the weight of the world on him. Call him the Cuban, uh, the Cuban Christ, call him the Russians. But when he finished, he came over and shook hands with each one of us. Thank you for coming. And his back was killing him. And he was tripping across these cables. And I said, Mr. President, we're on overtime. <laughs> mm. That Christmas, all of the uh, White House news photographers, members, there's about 500 of us. All of our kids got Christmas presents from the Kennedys. Oh, wow. Just one year. That was their way of thanking uh, the press for it. Yeah. I worked 45 straight hours on John Kennedy's funeral. Oh, wow. My boss called from Dallas, said, I'm too whipped. You're going to have to take it. By the time the plane gets down, so he's on the ground. Okay. Could you speak about that? I know it's probably an emotional subject. But. No, no. We had to beat all odds. We were told uh, certain rules were going to apply, a follow the parade route and so forth. And, uh, if you got a cameraman uh, standing there at 13th and Pennsylvania Avenue, he can't leave. Well, that isn't the way it was phrased, so we put tripods at different locations, and I leapfrogged cameramen around with cameras keep ahead of the casket. Mm -hmm. I only lost two. I knew I would. One at uh, where the Pennsylvania Avenue and 15th Street to make the big turn to go down. That was locked. So I had a man just shoot that and call those guys from out of town to do that. Mm -hmm. And he said, I get paid for just sitting here. I said, that's right. And I had one on top of Lincoln Memorial. And of course, that was locked once he was up there. Mm -hmm. uh, I somehow convinced the rookie policeman on Key Bridge that I had to get across that bridge to get to the military. He said, nobody's getting across. And they said, what's your badge number? <laughs> and in those days, we just had a skimpy little piece of card board in our pocket that said we were news media. Well, shortly after, we got gold badges in the police department. Oh, we wore out this little thing showing us all these out of town secret service men. <clears throat> I got to it and I was over there with all these camera crews lined up and I said, you know, at some point there's going to be a flyover with a plane out of formation. So I yelled at my camera, get it. Hands me a camera. You get it. Now these are union guys, right? You get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I did. When I came home, I was whipped, but I took the newspapers with all the pictures and headlines and a tape recorder and said what I had seen and done and just locked it up somewhere for our kids. Someday yeah. Yeah. That was momentous because uh, I had pre-decided where all the cameras should be and one of them was going to be on the 10th floor of the building next to the St. Matthew's Cathedral where the funeral was and he could get an angle straight down. Well, I had to put him in place four hours before the funeral because the roof was sealed. He leaned out and the glass that was so old, putty was so old, it dropped ten stories and just like a shot. I never saw a Secret Service men come off rooftops so quick. They were up there ready for that kind of thing. And I had to explain to several of them, the senior, senior field officer came over and he looked and he said, oh, I bet they're going to be locked in until this is over. I said, that's fine. Well, that same guy came to me when I was driving at Lyndon Johnson inauguration, and I was driving a block off parallel with extra camera equipment in case we had failures, and my battery died in the car. And the Secret Service agents lifted the car up and put me on the sidewalk, and here's this guy from out of town saying, Lines, every time I come to town, you're in, you're in my way. 